The depths of your boundless curiosity has led you to click this video, which is probably why you're the smartest of all your friends, you good looking son of a bitch. Well done. Well done. I'm Doodle A, don't forget that, and this freaky ass thing right here is a three toed sloth. Let us begin. In the animal kingdom, one of the few animals still lacking a comprehensive evolutionary history is the three toed sloth. Now you think at first glance that you've got this all figured out and that you've done enough internet searching to know that three-toed sloths must surely be closely related to the two-toed sloth. But slow the fuck down there, Poncho. Before you start running off to go publish your shitty papers, you might want to let me explain why three-toed sloth evolution is such a colossal mystery, and that's going to involve a taxonomy lesson. Taxonomic rank is basically what scientists use to group all species, both living and extinct, with their closest relatives and ancestors. In taxonomy, things are grouped from most general, like the difference between life and a rock, to the difference between a reptile and this insect, to finally the difference between this brown-throated sloth and this pale-throated sloth, and even now, I still can't tell the fucking difference. But now that that's out of the way, allow me to explain the mystery. You see, as it turns out, Three-toed sloths and two-toed sloths are actually not members of the same species like all humans are. That much is obvious. But they're not members of the same genus either, which is the next general step up from a species. In our case, our genus includes us and the extinct Homo erectus, Homo habilis, Homo heidelbergensis, all that shit. Hell, they're not even members of the same family like humans, gorillas, and orangutans are. And I want to stop right here because that's pretty significant. Three-toed sloths and two-toed sloths are more distant relatives than even humans are from orangutans. And our last common ancestor with orangutans existed about 15 million years ago. Let me put it in one more perspective here. If humans are loosely related to all apes, then three-toed sloths and two-toed sloths wouldn't even be that closely related to each other. In fact, their last common ancestor is the equivalent of a human's last common ancestor being any of these other primates. Yuakaris, Tamarins, Tarsiers. You, now you see what I'm saying. So in short, two-toed sloths and three-toed sloths don't belong to each other's species, genus, or family. They belong in each other's suborder, where all other sloths can be found. But just for the fun of it, we're going to go one tiny step above suborder into the main order called Pilosa and see what exactly is up in there. Holy sh sloths are related to giant anteaters? And now my job gets interesting because it's up to me to show you why scientists haven't completely gone crazy, though we are kind of scratching our heads here. I mean, what came first, the morphology of the anteater or the flat face of the sloth? And how can we be so sure that these animals are related at all? Granted, it may seem hard at first to see any real relation between both sloths and giant anteaters at first, but I implore you to look a little closer. First thing that we notice is that the fur of both of these creatures are much longer and coarser than any other living mammal today. That much is certain. And look at the coloration and pattern scheme. The markings that are shared by the three-toed sloths and anteaters are very similar. Notice that the dark coloring around the eyes and the chest. Not only that, but you have to keep in mind that 55 million years ago they shared a common ancestor. 55 million years ago. They're still blind. You may say this is a coincidence, and I hear you, but not many animals can call themselves long, coarse haired blondes. So, what about a skeletal comparison? Okay, let's see. This is the skeleton of an anteater. They have much stronger and sturdier frames than that of a sloth, which is why they retain their ability to walk. They've got long tails and these peculiarly long claws that they use to penetrate termite mounds with. Sloths have these claws too, but they use theirs primarily to climb and grasp tree limbs. This implies that the common ancestor of sloths and anteaters must have also had large claws and both groups must have gone on to utilize these claws differently without the need for much modification. And now the sloth skeleton. Bang! Right off the bat, we notice the now shortened vestigial tail. The humerus, radius, and ulna have been extremely elongated for a life in the trees, just as we see in gibbons and chimps. But if that's not enough of a similarity, notice how both sloths and anteaters walk on their knuckles and wrists in order to get around. Doesn't necessarily have to be that way. I mean, look at the pangolin. 
It has some big ass claws too, but it evolved to walk on its hind legs like a little baby T-Rex rather than scoot around the floor like a goddamn... Will you get your ass up a tree already? Jesus, you look handicapped. <laughs> but the similarities between anteaters and sloths don't stop there though. They both have really poor eyesight on top of an excellent sense of smell. They both carry their young around like little minions and even both of them blink one eye at a time for some strange reason. Well that's all good and great but what about those skulls? They're not even close to being similar and to that I can see. Ant eaters have these long tube like snouts for which to suck up ants with and sloths have the exact opposite. Sloths have large teeth and ant eaters clearly do not. So what gives? We're beginning to reach the limits of wisdom here, but judging by the skull and tooth anatomy, the common ancestor of sloths and ant eaters was carnivorous. That's right, carnivorous. Or at least an insectivore. My hypothesis is that the ant eater began losing its teeth the more specialized it became, and the more specialized it became, the narrower its snout. And at some point, you've got to trade in those big teeth for elongation. So as far as I'm concerned, the ancestor of ant eaters and sloths looked more like ancient ground sloths than any modern two or three toed sloth or ant eater today. But who knows? Maybe one of you can dig up the missing fossil that we need. Till then, 